how can you minimize bad scarring in a brown skin tummy tuck? Aha! You have asked, that's one of my questions. Okay, um, the, there's no, pro first of all, the brown skin thing, there's no uh, problem what type of skin you've got in terms of having surgery. So um, I think you might be uh, referring to worries in terms of keloid scarring. Keloid scarring is more associated, that's ugly raised lumpy scarring which is an abnormal type of scarring which can occur in certain t skin types and it can occur in certain positions so the skin types is usually the afro-caribbean skin uh, the positions is areas like the sternum the breastbone the shoulder the earlobes um, those are areas that can get keloid scarring so afro-caribbean uh, skin types can be predisposed to uh, keloid scarring but i wouldn't particularly be particularly worried about um, when you say brown skin, um, it, brown skin is not any worse scarring than any other type of skin. So I wouldn't be worried just in terms of your skin, because skin people with white skin can scar badly and be very red and obvious. People with brown skin can scar very well or bad. You know, bad. I made the point. It's not. It's not worse in brown or white or whatever. Um, but the scarring in general is obvious to start off with and it starts off quite red and quite overly colored so uh, quite overly brown and um again in a min is that a mini tummy tuck oh i thought my question was a mini tummy but you've just written tummy tuck there okay but anyway it starts off quite red and quite obvious um and um and then it goes overly coloured and then it fades. And uh, how you can minimise bad scarring, number one is you look at your history. Have you got any other scars? So certainly if you've got a history of keloid scarring, a history of bad scarring in yourself or in your family, then I would be thinking, oh, God, that you're worried about keloid scarring or what have you. There's not a lot we can do to prevent keloid scarring if you've got a history of bad scarring. There's not a lot we can do to make your scarring better when we do the surgery. So it would really just be a question of counselling you as to whether it's worth having the surgery or not. We'd say to you, look, you've got, you've got, you, you know, you've got this other scar and it's keloid. You've got a high risk of getting a keloid scar in this scar. And so you've got to wonder whether it's worth having the scarring. There's nothing we can do. If there was something we could do with the surgery to minimise keloid scarring, we'd just do that for everybody. So there's not a lot we can do for the, in the surgery to minimise scarring. But there are things you can do or we can do to minimise scarring in general. So um, we give a robust skin closure. And these are things we do to everybody. Robust skin closure, it's a multi-layered closure. There's several layers of sutures in order to make sure the wound is not under any tension. Because if there's any wound breakdown, if there's any wound tension, uh, if the wound doesn't heal up properly, particularly if you, if you get um, infection or anything like that, then you have a risk of getting hypertrophic scarring. It's not quite as bad as keloid. But it's a raised, ugly type of scarring. So we try and minimise the tension on the wound when we do the surgery. Um, we would, oh, I would always say to you, you've got to be careful in the sun. You don't want to get your sun on the scars when you're... Um, when your scars are fresh and active, which means when they're overly coloured. So as I said, they start being overly coloured, so browner than your normal skin, and then they fade. Uh, and they often fade to go a bit lighter than your normal skin, so you often get like a white line. But uh, certainly when they're browner than your normal skin, when they're active, you've got to avoid getting the sun on them. Um, so if you get the sun on them, they pick up the sun, they pick up the pigment, and they get, end up with a pigment, pigmented scar, so you end up with a brown scar which doesn't look good so you've got to be careful in the sun and then in general terms you've got to be careful with scars so with your skin in terms of not smoking uh keeping well hydrated um just generally keeping out of the sun and there are things you can do if you get a lumpy scar or a raised scar there are things you can do you can do things like silicone ointment silicone gels a lot of people talk about silicone ointment and gels in general terms for scars for all scars but really the evidence is for lumpy scars so if it does start to go red and lumpy there are things we can do so we're not really preventing it so to prevent it there's not a great deal you can do except for keeping out the sun the sun and keeping healthy avoiding tension so not going to back to the gym too soon not going back to work too soon um, but if it does start to go lumpy there are things you can do and we can do in terms of the gel and then there are other things like steroid injections and what have you if it's starting to go lumpy and and look like you're going to develop a bad scar um, but most of the things to prevent a bad scar we do already so here we go hypertrophic scars are associated with brown skin people i was told um well yeah keloid scars are associated with more like black skin it's more like afro-caribbean uh is uh keloid scars uh and that is absolutely true 
Um, uh, but if you haven't got a, um, if, so if you're Asian skin and you haven't got any history of hypertrophic scars, I wouldn't be particularly worried about it, although you have to be aware of it.